Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino. I'm on the road here in Chicago, the site of our biggest RHAP live show ever. And Wednesday night, we had 950 people at the Athenaeum Theater. Really fun panel. Watch the episode. It was a good one to watch with the big crowd. But it was a quick turnaround here today for me to do this exit interview with the woman that we saw get voted out of Survivor in several of place. Venus is going to be uh, joining us here in just a moment for the latest exit interview here. Of course, Wednesday night, thanks to Shannon Gus, who held it down on the postgame show with uh, Kelly Wentworth. Check that out. Of course, uh, we will be uh, back uh, tomorrow uh, with Stephen Fishback for Survivor Know-It-Alls on Friday this week. Uh, and then I'll have the recording of the live show up later in the day on Thursday, so make sure you subscribe for all of that. This week in Survivor History, also coming up, that I've got Zach work this week in Survivor History trivia with today. So, lots of stuff. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, love to hear what you have to say in the comments, and let's bring in my exit interview with Venus. Venus, good morning. Uh, so nice to talk to you. Now, Venus, you didn't win the million dollars but you may have won a million hearts so congratulations <laughs> for that venus thank you so much it means so much coming from you okay um venus so what a ride it's been uh would love to get into some of this stuff I, I would love to start with your conversation with charlie when you were talking to him can you tell yeah. us from from your perspective what were you hoping that charlie would take away from that conversation I, I was very misguided in the moment, but what I was hoping was, because we had a, a lot of conversations leading up to that one throughout the game, I was hoping that I was able to finally find someone I could trust in this game. Like I, you see, you could see me throughout the season, try and fail to like form an alliance with people and either they get medevaced or they just stop talking to me, or you know, they, they just think I'm a shady bitch. Um, but what I was hoping with Charlie was, this is my chance to actually form a bond with someone and to, like, Survivor is not a solo game. People forget that. It's a multiplayer game. Like, you need to work with others if you actually expect to win in the end. And so I was really hoping that this would be a turning point for me where I could actually, you know, garner someone's trust for once and convince them that I'm not the sneaky person. I'm just a very loyal person. And I really did want to work with him. And my intentions were to use this this thing up my sleeve for the both of us. But obviously, he ultimately didn't read it that way. Um, and I see that now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're probably a fiercely loyal person because if somebody oh, yeah. would have put their trust in you, I feel like you would never turn on that person. Never, never. Honestly, going into the game, that was my strategy. I just needed one ride or die. I just needed one person to trust me um, and I would have gone to the end with them. I never would have like stopped in the back. And it also like speaking about trust, even though my fellow NAMIs disliked me so much, even during the merge and onwards, before each of their vote outs, Soda, Hunter, Tevin, I had a conversation with them again prior to their elimination saying like, hey, I still really want to work with you. I know you don't like me, but I still really want to work with you. Um, but ultimately, they did not trust me. So yes, I am a fiercely loyal person. Yeah. Rider <laughs> Venus, help me out here because yeah. I, as a viewer, yes, need to know that do you feel like the vote changed after you talked to Charlie or was it going in that direction anyway and you talking to Charlie didn't change anything? No, no, no. It 100% that conversation and my big mouth, it really sunk my game. If I hadn't had that conversation with Charlie, because it was really close to, to tribal, if I just didn't say anything to him, it would have been cute. It would have been cute, but I guess um, that conversation had breeded more insecurity than trust between me and Charlie. And ultimately he did what was best for his game. Looking back on it now, I can see it from his perspective. For me, it was like, here's something we can use together. But for him, it was like, here is a new uncertainty in my game that can prevent me from winning. So that is something that I can see now looking back. 
Why do you feel like you were the target at the final seven? Do you feel like it was for strategic reasons or was it a personality clash? It was not. Can I tell you? It was the stupid. It was the stupidest vote they could have possibly done. It was the stupidest vote. And as much as people think, uh, oh, she's arrogant, she's delusional, she thinks she's running the game. Do you know what my pitch was to people on the island? It was everyone hates me. No one trusts me. No yeah. one will vote for me in the end. Take me with you. Like use right. me as your shield. Right. You know, which is it? Is it Venus can't win or we have to get rid of her now? Which is it? Right. Can't like, be both. Pick a lane. God damn it. Pick a lane and stick to it. Yeah. But it was very frustrating because in my mind, that was this cue at that point. I'm just speaking to like the mentality in the game at that point. If Q would have made it to the end at that point, we all thought, well, it was obvious to me at least that he would win because to be able to cause a cloud of confusion so many times in a row successfully, it yeah. speaks a lot to his game. It's impressive whether you like it or not. It's impressive that he's been able to pull it off. So um, I think that was a huge miscalculation on their part to vote me compared to him because he at that point had a greater chance of winning in the end than I ever did. So um, I thought it was a stupid vote and they should have kept me. <laughs> it goes without saying. So that challenge uh, that it was so tense, so dramatic, it looked like you had it two or three oh, yeah. different times. Oh, and yeah. then... First off, how long did that take? Uh, was that an hour that you guys were doing that? I mean, it felt like ages. It really did. But um, I was I had gotten so close so many times. I don't know what it, it's like. I forgot how to use my hands in the last second. But um, yeah, that challenge, it felt like forever. I enjoyed the show of that challenge. It was so fun for me. And even when I lost at the end, I had a big smile on my face because I was just excited to like <laughs> do a challenge that didn't involve a lot of energy, <laughs> like a lot of like running and heavy lifting. I'm like, okay, this is something I can do. Um, so I was just very happy to do something like that. Venus, can you tell me what was the reaction when you got to Ponderosa and there's Soda and Tevin and Hunter that at various points, uh, you know, you sort of ha had your, uh, you know, back and forth with. So how did uh, they receive you at Ponderosa? How honest am I allowed to be right now? <laughs> like, honestly, um, I was terrified going to Ponderosa because I'm like, all these people hate me. But I was, I was calmed down by the fact that the game is the game and now we're outside of the game. So hopefully they don't hold any grudges towards me. I was very disappointed with the fact that when I did get to Ponderosa, um, a few of them did not even come up to greet me, uh, continued to not speak to me, continued to not make eye contact with me. Um, I had made several attempts to bury the hatchet and to like make amends and extend an olive branch. And it was met with a um, uh, very, very negative reception, uh, which I don't think was warranted. Like as much as you might dislike me, like I, I never come with malicious intentions. I really am trying to put my best foot forward. Um, but like the only saving grace at Ponderosa was uh, playing Scrabble with Hunter and then eating cereal and watching Avatar in the mornings. So that really is, that was, my only peaceful moment there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, at tribal council, you and Q uh, went back and forth also. Was that the yeah. first time that you two had kind of gotten into it or had there been other conversations with Q like that? There are other conversations. Can I tell you, Q is, he was projecting like crazy because as much as he liked to say that Venus can't be trusted, she's sneaking, she's running around everywhere. He was the one saying that. Like he was the one breathe, breathing life into that lie and telling everyone that when in reality he was telling on himself, Q was doing all that. Q was creating chaos, running around, talking shit and telling lies about conversations I had. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm so glad I told him to like shut his mouth in that moment in tribal because he was talking a load of crap. He was talking out his butt um, and I was just sick of it. Him and Maria, sick of it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Venus. I'd love to hear from you that, you know, you have the opportunity to finally, you know, tell your side of the story on a lot of these things. And it did yeah. seem like that you were frustrated with 
how things were shown to the audience over the course of the season. So do you feel like that they portrayed your story accurately? And if not, what, what do, did we not see on the show? Oh, okay. Um, it's so, it's so weird to think about it. Cause obviously you're presented as a character in the show. Ultimately mm-hmm. you're a caricature of yourself. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna say that it was a completely inaccurate portrayal. Obviously it's without context, but I feel like it, it did show both, you know, my positive traits and my flaws. And um, like ultimately I'm very grateful for the experience because whether you like it or not, even the negative parts of you shown on TV, it has a negative truth. And it's something that you can either take on the chin and try and learn from and grow from or deny wholly. And I, what I find very upsetting is that there's certain people who look at their edits and see the way they treated me and are upset at me about the edit. These people uh, feel as though they were unfairly presented when in reality, they should acknowledge the fact that they did those things to me. They were very rude and cruel to me and they should own up to that and learn from it and grow from it. And I'm not someone to hold grudges. Like if any one of those people who treated me poorly just said, hey, Venus, I'm sorry, you didn't deserve that much hate. I would move on from it. But the fact that some people are taking it and taking it as if it's, it's an inaccurate portrayal that they weren't horribly cruel to me and that they didn't isolate me and stop talking to me and ostracize me on an island where I had no one else to speak to. That is what really grinds my gears because like show some humanity. Okay. We're all people at the end of the day. Nothing is that serious. It helps no one's game to just disregard someone completely and their existence. So I'm very uh, upset with that. But in terms of my story, um, I, I, w- I just wish that people understood that a lot of where I'm coming from and being so outspoken is not from a place of arrogance or cockiness. I'm, I was aware that I would go further by keeping my mouth shut. But the reason I'm on the show is to represent the women of Iran. They don't have the privilege to speak freely. I have that privilege. And the last thing I'm gonna do is censor myself or remove my agency in this game because I have a voice too. And I was sure as hell gonna use it. And I'm glad I did. Yeah, and you had those poignant final words at the end of the episode. Yes. And yes. Uh, it was uh, really, really well done. And uh, I'm sure your fun. family is very proud. Yes, they are. Honestly, I, I didn't know they were going to include that. I'm so grateful they did. I burst into tears when I watched the episode and I heard myself say those words. It means a lot. People don't understand how much it means to the conversation. And it 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 really warms my heart. So I'm happy. I want to ask you a little bit about uh, your relationship with Kenzie, because it seemed like for a minute there last night, it was like, oh, all right, this is something, Venus and Kenzie. But at the end of the day, even Kenzie was one of the people uh, that wrote your name down. What what went wrong? Um, uh, Charlie told them that I have an advantage and she didn't believe it because she saw my little my acting where I was like looking for the idol with her. She's like, no way Venus has an idol, like, please. but ultimately, Charlie swayed the votes. He, he had control on both sides. I think people are really underestimating the power Charlie has. He's playing a very quiet game, which is impressive. Um, but yeah, I found it. Can I just say it's very telling in the episode when Kenzie said, the only person who hasn't lied to me is Venus, of all people. Like, no, duh babe like of course i i'm like that is such a character assassination that everyone thought i was this big fat lying liar because i'm the most direct and honest out of all of you like i'm gonna tell you how it is and it was just it was a little bit uh, uh, redeeming to hear her talk positively about me because you just need to talk to me for more than a few minutes to like realize i'm i'm very chill <laughs> okay uh venus real quick would you play survivor yeah. again I mean, statistically, the chances are so low, but um, I don't know. Let's see. If I, Jess, I, if Jeff I, asks, I didn't ask, will you? I said, would you? Would I? Um, will other people from season 46 be there? I, Question. It's not my call. Yeah. Okay. I, know. Uh, I, I, I would love to. I'll, I'll, ultimately, this is a great platform, um, but it would have to be for the right reasons. The last thing I would want to do is go to, to feed my ego. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um, well, 
Venus, uh, you were very fun to watch, very fun to talk to today. Yes. And so let me just be the very first person to wish you happy Mother's Day, Venus. Because I am mother. That's right. <laughs> I know, shut up. Um, thank you so much. Um, my my cat, my only son, is very grateful. So, yes. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Venus. Uh, great to talk to you. Hope we can chat again soon, okay? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, All Rob. Right, take care, Venus. Bye. Take care. Bye. There you have it, Venus. A great job by her. Uh, she has a lot to say, and I'm sure uh, we'll have some more interviews with Venus coming up in the future. Would love to hear what you thought about this week's exit interview here in the comments. I love to read what you have to say about all the stuff we do here on RHAP. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll be back with more Survivor coverage here on RHAP.